Talk about your flair. Really? I, I have 15 pieces on. I, uh, well, well, okay, 15 is the minimum, okay? Oh, okay. Now, you know, it's up to you whether or not you want to just do the bare minimum or, uh, well, like Brian, for example, has 37 pieces of flair on today, okay? Mm. A terrific smile. Okay, so you, you want me to wear more? I blame this movie for the downfall of TGA Fridays. A story for another time, perhaps. But is food service an option, a good option for work? Take the next step a little bit closer. Take the next step with Quinn. Take the next step and never stop learning. And falling down. Then get back up and take the next step again. My mom explained to me that being a waiter, waitress, or bartender was really no different than being an actor or actress on television or in the movies. The restaurant is your show, and the guests are your audience. You want to treat all of your guests as if they're guests in your own home. Boy, I tell you, some days, one of these days, it's just going to be like... <laughs> so can I get you gentlemen something more to drink or maybe something to nibble on some pizza shooters shrimp poppers or extreme fajitas just coffee okay sounds like a case of the Mondays <laughs> one of the things my mom didn't tell me was that I would find a family of friends that I could serve with um, that I could serve and that they would assist me in becoming the man that God created me to be now, in Goodyear, Arizona, as it was starting to grow, a lot of restaurants were popping up. So it turned out that the service industry, not just within TGI Fridays, but the service industry for all the restaurants in that area, we all became friends. We all would hang out outside of work. We'd all visit each other while at work. And that made for a vibrant community, I would say. Granted, we were a a lot of individuals trying to find our own way in the world in our early 20s. So um, many things happened that probably shouldn't have and experiences that we shouldn't have had ourselves opened up to. But um, for those of us that got through it, I pray that we're all doing a lot better these days. Oh. But poor Amy, she's a different story. See, she was DOA from the very beginning. And by extra lemon, we mean enough for our waters and then some more. Oh, look at the scowl on that woman's face. It's my fault. That would be lovely. It's all my fault. Thank you, Thank you so much. Yes, you are too kind. She'll be lucky to get 10%. I just don't understand what would compel a person to be such a bitch to a total stranger. Maybe she was abused as a child. Oh, God. And when it comes to rude guests, uh, I always learn just to kill them with kindness. Um, be so nice that it's annoying. Just, you know, dust your shoulders off and move on with the day. You got another table to take care of and you don't want one bad table to affect your mood that's going to affect all of the other tables and guests that you might serve for the rest of your shift. So take it as it comes, not as it goes. If uh, you can pass a table off to another server, great. Uh, if you need to learn how to take care of them yourself, do it. Uh, you'll be stronger for it. All right, see what Serena's doing right there? She's baiting those poor saps. I love Patrick Swayze. Yeah, yeah you kind of remind me of him. I guarantee you they're going to leave her a fat tip. <laughs> Women. So when I sat down for the interview, uh, the bartending manager was really just looking for beautiful women to hire, so I didn't make it past that first interview. Um, a week later... Um, I get a call from the general manager saying we didn't have enough waiters with experience. So we're going to go ahead and train you to become a great server. I'll let my guests be the uh, judge of that. Okay, I wrote a little something about working at TGI Fridays two years after I'd started working there. But I ended up working at TGI Fridays off and on for probably 10 years. 13 different TGI Fridays in eight states. The general manager at TGI Fridays I worked under um, always strove for improvement. He acknowledged my blindnesses, um, encouraged me not only to find out what works, 
but to find multiple solutions to everyday routines. His patience and calmness uh, during stressful situation caught my eye as an understanding that each employee has a unique work ethic that is beneficial to the entire company. He's been open-minded every time I went with him with a fresh idea concerning the store and overall my role in the industry. All managers I've had the privilege of working with um, encourage my ability to keep a solid, influential guest focus from restaurant regulars to bar regulars, having fun with the guests, handling guest complaints. My focus on the guests have put into perspective that I am really working for them, not TGI Fridays. Over the first two years I worked there, I fell into frustrating, repetitive circles that res resulted in my desire to work elsewhere. During the times, the guests, whether old or new, inspired me to continue my line of work with TGI Fridays at the time. My ability to anticipate the needs of the guests and exceed their expectations uh, keeps the guests and me happy with Fridays. Now, we had a regular that was a pastor. We called him Dr. Pepperman. He brought in a lot of church members uh, to meet our staff and experience our friendly, courteous service. And, of course, good food. He liked to talk and loved to listen to his waiter waitress on a personal level uh, as well as professional. A uh, target employee normally came in by herself during lunch and used to read while she waited for her meal. Um, she brought in family members from time to time and is always pleasurable company. A guest who was uh, vocally impaired had been one of my favorites. He taught me to be patient with misunderstandings and to always take my time to clarify uh, the orders. The NTN uh, video game machines that they had brought people in day after day uh, for countless hours of trivia. Uh, it created a cheers-like atmosphere, having fun at Fridays at the bar. One of these regulars, Dave, was a maintenance supervisor for Palm Valley Apartments across the street from the TGI Fridays and helped uh, myself, other co-workers, on countless occasions uh, outside of TGI Fridays. Prior to 9-11, um, I'd have a lot of military parties of 30 to 35 Air Force members. All individual checks come in um, from Luke Air Force Base and absolutely loved uh, serving them prior to um, them all basically getting shipped out. So after working at TGI Fridays for six months, I don't know what their policy is now, but after six months, you can ask your general manager to give you a TGI Fridays passport book. If you're a good enough employee, they can uh, allow for you to be a, uh, to work at any TGI Fridays around the world. All you have to do is walk in, say, can I pick up a shift? If there's a shift available, they'll let you uh, slide right into it and send your hourly wages back to your home store. So having started at the Palm Valley Goodyear Arizona TGI Fridays, uh, I've worked at, let's see. Uh, Indianapolis, Indiana, in the airport. Cupertino, California. Colorado Springs. Albuquerque, New Mexico. At store 1862, which was at a mall on the um, east side of Albuquerque. There was one in Rio Rancho also I did not work at. Uh, the one at the mall on the east side is the one that I picked up like one or two shifts in while visiting uh, some family members. Also worked at the uh, Glendale, Arizona, TGI Fridays on Bell Road, the Metro Center TGI Fridays off of I-17, the Fiesta Mall TGI Fridays. One of my favorite trips was with my buddy Nate to the French Quarter in New Orleans during Mardi Gras, where we stayed at a hostel and worked on worked at the TGI Fridays on Rural Street, one block away from Bourbon. So made our money during the day and then pretty much spent it all at night. Also worked at TGI Fridays Front Row at the uh, Bank One Ballpark. Uh, I believe it's the Chase Ballpark now. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I have no idea. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. I um, moved to Pennsylvania for a short period of time in 2007 
and worked at the Exton, Pennsylvania TGI Fridays. I'm not sure if that one's still there either, but I thought that was a corporate store. Again, correct me if I'm wrong if you know. Excuse me, sir. You forgot your change. No, that's uh, for you. That's your tip. Oh, no, no, no. I insist. You take it. You obviously need this more than I do. Speak to you, manager. So here's my advice to bartenders and servers when they get their low gratuity, their low tip on a high check. Uh, instead of looking at it per table or per check, look at all of your checks added up and all of your tips added up at the end of your shift. If you're averaging 10 bucks an hour, just in tips, not including your $2.13 an hour or whatever your hourly rate is as a server or bartender. Um, add it all up, and you're making more than minimum wage. Nine out of ten times. Another benefit of working at TGI Fridays as a server was that when uh, business would get slow, say during the summer times, I was able to transfer back to the kitchen into different areas to where I was able to learn how to cook, make different meals from different items, and um, the basic thing that I learned is, you know what, you pick your meat, you pick your starch, you pick your veggie, you pick your bread, throw one of each on a plate, and you got yourself a meal. How you doing there, Miss Ellie? They can't see you. No, you can't get it out. There it is. There you are. I got you. Yeah, pretty doggy. Love you. So remember when you're serving your guests, whether with a drink or a plate of nice food, serve them with a smile and be thankful that you get to serve other people. It's a great job for extroverts. Uh, introverts should probably get a server job too, just so they can have that one-on-one -on -one interaction with others. So here's my bottom line with uh, serving. Um, when you think about the money, I see a lot of these TikToks and whatnot of servers complaining of bad tippers and uh, bad guests. And I see, um, I see the guests that put their servers and bartenders on blast too. Um, not nice. I just stop going out to eat if guests and the servers and bartenders alike are all going to be jerks about it. That's an easy way to save money. Just stop going out to eat. However, building a sense of community is a good thing. And uh, restaurants do tend to be one of those building blocks in communities. So as I mentioned, the uh, stores in the Southwest that I worked at were under the Main Street and Main Franchise store. And so when the franchise go under, all the stores go under. What do you do? So in the next episode of Occupationally Divergent, we'll go ahead and take a look at a couple different franchises. If you like this video, hit thumbs up, subscribe, share, and comment below.